In this video, we can discuss the macro processor algorithm and the data structures used. Now the context introduction data structures algorithm. We can see how to design a macro processor. So the easy method is a two pass macro processor in which in the first pass, the definition of the macro can be processed and in the second pass, macro invocation statements are processed. But this type of design cannot handle the definition of one macro inside the definition of another macro that is it will not allow the nested macros consider this example macros macro so macro keyword means this is the definition of the macro called macros and inside this definition two other macros are defined read buffer rd buff macro with these parameters then it is ending with ment and wr buff macro with these parameters it is ending with this ment and this meant is for the outer macro. So two macros are defined inside the macro macros. So this two pass macro processor cannot handle the definition of one or two macros inside another macro. So we will follow another method that is a single pass macro processor or one pass macro processor which alternate between definition and invocation. So in the previous example, defining macros does not define rd buff and wr buff these definitions are processed only when an invocation or call of macros is expanded so a one pass macro processor that can alternate between macro definition and macro expansion is able to handle these type of macros there are three main data structures used in the macro processor algorithm so the first one is the def tab second one is name tab then arg tab Three tables are used. So def tab it contains the definition of the macro. A program which contains a macro, the initial code is the definition of the macro, which is the opcode for that is macro. So the definition completely is moved to the data structure def tab. Then name tab contains the name of the macro and it will also contain two pointers. Name tab contain pointers to the beginning and end of the definition in def tab. Then arg tab contains the actual arguments. This is used during the expansion of the macro invocation. When a macro invocation statement or macro call is recognized, the arguments are stored in arg table. The actual arguments are stored in the arg table. As the macro is expanded, arguments from arg table are substituted for the corresponding parameters in the macro body. This figure shows the representation of the three tables so this is the first table this is def tab so the first thing is the macro definition is completely moved to the def tab till meant the complete definition is moved to the def tab and the macro name for example the macro name is rd buff read buffer macro the macro name is stored in the table name tab and two pointers are kept the first pointer points to the beginning of the macro definition rd buff and the other second pointer points to the end. So there are two pointers to the def tab from name tab. Then arg tab, which is which contains the actual arguments, that is the arguments in the macro call or macro invocation statement. Now we can see the working of the macro processor algorithm. It's a one pass macro processor algorithm. So this is the input to the macro processor means. An assembly language program, SIC or SICXC assembly language program, which contains a macro. So this, this is the macro definition. After that, this is the main program. How we identify it's the main program? Because of the start opcode. So this is the main program. And here, this macro name, the name of the macro is EX1. So this macro name is used here with this actual argument so this means this is the macro code so what this algorithm has to do it has to replace this macro call with the definition statements that actual arguments are given to the formal arguments that substitution has to take place so what all things it will do we can see so first thing is this is our input program how the output should lo look like this is the expanded program that is the output so expanded program output every time execution starts from the main program that is from the start. So 
only macro invocation statements are getting expanded. All other statements are directly copied to the output. So this is the main program starts from here. So the first line sample star 1000 it is completely copied to the output. Then only this invocation statements are replaced by the definition statement. So initially the first thing this algorithm has to do is the definition, the first code is the definition of the macro. This definition of the macro is entirely copied to the def tab. Three data structures we are using, name tab, R tab, and def tab. So the first thing the algorithm has to do is it has to completely copy this definition part to the def tab table. And the name of the macro, here it is ex1, the name of, of the macro is moved to the name tab. And we have to keep two pointers to the def tab, one to the beginning of the macro definition and other pointer to the end of the macro definition. So this is the first thing the algorithm has to do. That is, it has to move the definition of the macro to def tab and the name of the macro to name tab and name tab should have two pointers. And then next thing is, it will the algorithm will start, start by line by line. So each line, it will copy to the output starts from the main program the, so the first line is copied to the output and the, see the second line so this is ex1 n1 comma n2 so ex1 this opcode is a macro name so opcode is a macro name means it is it's a macro call or macro similar to function call it is a macro call so this macro call is written to the output as a command line so here we can see a dot operator which shows the comments in sic so this is written to output as a command line. Then these actual parameters, this substituted for positional notation. So this A will get N1 and B will get N2. So the lines will be LDA N1 and STA N2. Then this macro is finished. So it will come back to the where it is called. Then the remaining lines, these are like normal lines that is copied to the output. So this macro call during macro call this actual arguments replaces the formal arguments so this process is called as expanding the macro in the algorithm we will use a function called expand for this purpose and writing this definition part to the def tab that is done in the define procedure so these are the main two procedures define and expand so initially, we will completely copy this macro definition into def tab and set two pointers and macro name into name tab. Then all the normal programming lines will be copied to the output. This macro invocation, when the macro invocation statement is invo encountered, then actual arguments, again one more thing, actual arguments are inserted into arc, ta arc tab, arc table. N1 and N2 are inserted into R table and this actual arguments are substituted for the formal arguments and then this return to the output. Macroprocessor algorithm. So it is written as high level here. It's written as procedures. So initially expanding that variable equal to false. They are not expanding. So that variable is initialized as false. Then two functions are written here, get line and process line. Get line, this function is used to take input from the input file and also from the def tag. Process line, what processing has to do for each of the lines that is written in process line. So now we can see the process line procedure. So in this search name tab for opcode. So we all know that each assembly language program contains three fields. So the first field is a label field, then opcode field and operand field. So first we read the line and this check the opcode. If the opcode is in name tab, what does it mean? Opcode is in name tab means what 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 will be there in name tab? Name tab contains macro names. So this means opcode is a macro name. What does it mean? It means that it is a mac the statement is a macro invocation or macro call. So if this line is a macro call, then if found, then we have to call the expand procedure. Macro call means we have to expand. That is replacing the actual arguments, substituting the actual arguments for formal arguments. Then again, if else if suppose this opcode is not in name tab. 
then we will check whether the opcode equal to macro. What does that mean? Opcode equal to macro means whatever follows is the macro definition. So if it is a macro definition, then the complete definition till meant we have to move to the def tab definition table and we have to enter the macro name in name tab and set two pointers. So that is done in the define procedure. So if the opcode equal to macro, then we have to call the define procedure else. Else means it's a normal line. It's not a macro call and it's not a macro definition. It's a normal programming line. So we can directly write source line to expanded file. Expanded file means the output file. So we'll write that line to the output file. So these things are done in the process line procedure. So process line procedure, first it will check this op code, whether it is, it is in name tab, which means it is a macro call. Then it will call the expand procedure. Else if it will check whether the op code equal to macro. If op code equal to macro means it is the whatever follows is the macro definition and it will call the define procedure. Else it's a normal programming line. It is directly written to the expanded file or output file. Now we can see the define procedure. Define procedure what it has to do. It has to move the definition of the macro that is from macro keyword till meant it has to move to the def tab. So here one more condition, one more condition we have to handle that is sometimes one macro, one macro definition contains another macro, that inner macro, maybe nested macro definitions inside one macro another macro can be there and the mend of that macro is there and again some two three macros inside means more mend will be there so we don't know when this mend outer macro end ends so in order to track that one we'll keep one counter called level so whenever a macro keyword is encountered level this counter becomes counter is if I, initially the counter is one and whenever this macro keyword and is encountered then level is incremented and whenever meant keyword is encountered the level is decremented so that is that given here that is enter define procedure see the define procedure enter macro name into name tab define procedure is called when the macro definition is encountered so the macro name is entered into name tab then macro prototype which means the definition of the macro is entered to def tab and we'll keep one variable level which is initialized to one while level greater than zero, get line, which takes the next input line. If this is not a common line, then substitute positional notation for parameters. So this parameters, formal arguments are given some positional notation. First parameter is given one, second parameter two, like that. Then enter line into def tag. If opcode equal to macro, then level is incremented. Level equal to level plus one. If opcode equal to meant, then level equal to level minus one. Then store name tab at last after entering the definition completely into def tab store in name tab pointers to the beginning and end of the definition. So this is the define procedure. So define procedure what it does is it copies the macro definition into the def tab and it sets two pointers and one more condition it has to handle is the nested macros that is inside one macro definition another macro definition is there. So that condition also it has to handle then now we can see the next procedure which is the expand procedure when this expand procedure is called whenever a macro call is encountered this expand procedure is called so expand procedure what it has to do is it has to replace the formal arguments in the definition of the macro with the actual arguments and write it to the output so expanding equal to true get first line of macro definition from def tab so now it has to read from the def tab not from the input file Set up arguments from macro invocation in R tab. Actual arguments are entered into R tab. Write macro invocation to expanded file as a command line. This macro call is given to the output file as a command line. While not end of macro definition, get line and process line. These two procedures are called. Then at, at last expanding equal to false. So in get line, this substitution is given in the get line procedure. Procedure get line if expanding, which means if we are in the middle of the expanding procedure then get next line expanding means we have to get the next line from the def tab only then substitute arguments from arg tab for positional notation else if expanding equal to false means we are not in expanding the macro invocation then read next line from the input file so this is the single pass or one pass macro processor algorithm 
procedures used in the algorithm is explained here. So first the procedure defined what it does, it is called when the beginning of a macro definition is recognized, makes the appropriate entries in def tab and name tab. So def tab, the definition of the macro is entered in name tab, name of the macro is entered and two pointers are set. Then expand procedure is called to set up the argument values in arc tab, actual arguments and expand a macro invocation statement. Next, the procedure get line is called to get the next line to be processed either from def tab if it expanding equal to true or from the input file. Then handling of macro definition within macro for that we are using the level variable. When a macro definition is encountered, it is entered in the def tab. The defined procedure keeps a counter variable level. Every time a macro directive is encountered, this counter is incremented by one. The moment the innermost macro ends, indicated by the directive meant, it starts decreasing the value of the counter variable by one. The last meant should make the counter value set to zero. So when level becomes zero, the meant corresponds to the original macro or outer macro directive. Thank you everyone.